Okay, so I'm standing here in the northeastern part of South Africa where uh, malaria is what they call uh, in a seasonal area where malaria occurs generally just in the rainy summer months. Currently in South Africa, malaria in this part of the world is not much of an issue because of effective malaria control. But before there was malaria control, because malaria affected the lives of thousands of people every summer in this part of the world, as well as many other parts of Africa. And before they knew that malaria was a disease that was transmitted by an extracellular organism that uh, infected both humans and could be vectored by mosquitoes, they thought that this tree was responsible for malaria. And this is what they come commonly call the fever tree. And in areas of Africa where this tree is common, is also associated with parts of Africa where there's a lot of moisture and there's a lot of standing water because these are trees that require a lot of water to survive. And because they're associated with water, of course, there were the mosquitoes breeding in the area that vectored the malaria. But until then, they thought this was the tree that was responsible for malaria. And one of the other reasons why they called it the fever tree is because if you rubbed your hand or your body against the tree, you picked up this yellow powder on your skin. And they thought that this is, uh, once this got into your body, this made you sick and caused malaria. And so if you look at my hand here, and you can see the hand that's been rubbing the bark is a lot more yellow than the hand that hasn't been rubbing the bark, which is why they called it the fever tree. And of course the fever tree is an acacia, and because uh, it has these long thorns, which is characteristic of acacia trees. And uh, the species name of this tree is uh, Xanthophloa. So this is commonly called, or well, scientific name is Acacia Xanthophloa. So come and join me for the next two lectures where I will enlighten you a little more about the difficulties associated with trying to control malaria, which of course is complex around the fact that it is a very complex disease that is vectored by many different species of mosquitoes. There are five species of plasmodium that affect humans and it's a difficult disease to control because of the lackluster performance of many governments in Africa in applying the appropriate tools that would otherwise very effectively control malaria. So be prepared for the next two lectures to, to uh, learn a bit more about malaria, malaria transmission, the natural cycles of malaria, and malaria control.